Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Terrific Tuesday, the April 28th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much, much more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got uh, the indices a little bit mixed out here. The NASDAQ is the one that's in the uh, red. It's off 88 points. The NDX 100, 53 points for the NASDAQ composite. Otherwise, the uh, rest of the indices are to the trading to the upside, including the spot volatility index. The S&P is up three. The NASDAQ, the Dow is up 76. The Russell's up 22. Leading the charge here again today up nearly 2%. Wilshire 5000 is, um, well, the trainees are up 1.5%. They're trading out at 88.75. You've got gold trading back four bucks, silver 10 pennies, light sweet crude is flat, as is natural gas. Uh, we're going to change that from May to June. I believe that is now the active contract. So let's go ahead and update that out here okay good there we go so now we've got the uh, june contract up nearly four pennies out there and uh, treasury bonds are up over one point as we speak they're trading at 181 and 22 30 seconds lead the charge dollar wise the upside it's booking holdings then roper technologies f5 networks rockwell automation and cummings are up 38 18 11 13 and 13 bucks out there all of them over a couple of percent. Amazon is the leader to the downside, off 43 bucks, nearly 2%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals off nearly 2% or 10 bucks. Tesla down 18, about 2.5%. So plenty to look at. Let's begin by taking a look at uh, the uh, markets out here. I don't have any questions at this stage of the game. Maybe there's some in the den. I don't know. Let's go take a look. What were the markets doing this morning? Always important to understand support and resistance out here. So what the subscribers knew this morning was that there was going to be a sell-off, and we had some roads momentum indicator signals that were forming, none that had confirmed. At 9.30, we saw the ES Mini confirm that pattern when it generated that little dark cloud cover candle. Then what did price do? Well, price proceeded to close below support, the support levels being their daily, their profiles, not daily profiles, their profiles for the 30-minute time frame. There was a brand new profile that formed at 10 o'clock, but price closed right below the bottom of that. That told you that uh, those key levels of support had failed, and then where was price headed back to? Exactly. Headed right back to its breakout level. Where did it stop? right at its breakout level. Now that breakout level, folks, this is taking a look at using the TD nine count pattern. I uh, really suggest that you use this. Let's say you were an intraday trader out here and you caught the Rhodes momentum indicator top or some other top inside the ES mini and uh, you watch price, you would have been able to have had you, your stops in place or you could have reversed your trade. You would have known, you, known. You would have known your target well before it got there. 
That's helpful. Likewise, I would have hated for you to have been the person who wasn't an intraday trader. So you don't have to be a day trader out here. But you were not an intraday trader and you saw the market sell off. And of course, you've been listening to my show saying, uh, giving you the reasons, giving you the facts, not my opinions, giving you the facts about what to anticipate in the market based upon history. You can decide to ignore history. That's fine. That's totally up to you. But, but, but to come back to this, what I would have hated was for you to have understood what I've been sharing with you, watched the market sell off, and say now was the time to go to the short side. And you would have shorted the market, let's say, somewhere around that 2856, not understanding that on a short-term time frame, all that was transpiring was price coming back to support. The market is nothing more well, it's many things, but it's really nothing more when we see Mark moves going higher and lower is understanding where those key levels of support and resistance are or topping and bottoming patterns as well. So you've, you've got to know that. So, look, you, you don't have to be an intraday trader, but to the extent that you're going to make some type of move from an intraday basis out here, boy, you really want to understand at a minimum this TD9 count pattern. So just go subscribe to Mastering Probability for 30 days or less. It won't cost you anything out there, and you'll get a, a set of tools that you'll be able to use for a lifetime. So where are we in the market? So what we know is that the move so far today inside the S&P 500 has been nothing more than a move down to support. So now where is price headed to? Where's price headed to when you take a look at this 30 minute time frame chart? Where is its key level of resistance now? Now, what we can also see here is you can see on a 30 minute basis a bullish structured profile. And price is above the center line of that box, which is 2865. 2883. Absolutely, Jay. Right, that is Stevie's green line. That is going to be the next level of resistance on this move to the upside. If price is able to overcome that green line, then what's our target? Our target would be the top of that bullish structured profile. Takes you all the way back to the highs from 930 this morning. So what you're going to want to watch is Stevie's green line as price moves up to that 28.83. Yep, Jay, that'd be the 29.13 level. But the first level, the first area, the next battle that should unfold inside the ES Mini would be as price gets up towards Stevie's green line right now in that 28.83-ish range out there. That's what you're going to be paying attention to. Uh, you're also going to be paying attention, as I am to this 2856.50. Why? Because we know that was a breakout level. Now, if price was able to move below that, close below that, then where would you say would be the price target? Again, a close below 2856.50. You do not need to be a technician to be able to answer this question. It is just sitting there on the chart. It is nothing subjective. It's not like Stevie just decided to draw a line there. It's 2814. Jay gets the, he's, he's teacher's pet. There's no doubt about it. He's the teacher's pet out there. And so, yeah, 2814 would become the uh, would become that next target. So you now are set up, really, I, I would believe, for the rest of the day out here. You're set up for the rest of the day. You're going to watch that 2883-ish area. You know if price gets above that, you should anticipate to move all the way back to the highs from 930 this morning, about 2913. Likewise, a close below 2856, and you'll know the next target is 2814. This is easy peasy, isn't it? That's the way it's supposed to be. It's not complicated. You just need somebody to walk you through and teach you these tools out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow's up 44, S&P flat, NASDAQ uh, 100 off 100 points out here. So the first question that comes in is from uh, Mark S. And uh, Mark wants me to take a look at the uh, GDX out here. And uh, Mark's question is about the, uh, this was from earlier today. Uh, might have been yesterday, actually. I, I can't recall when. But um, Mark's question is, after my response back to him, so my response back to him, he wanted me to take a look at the GDX. And what I, I believe that I had shared with him was that the GDX had uh, made the 118 to be equal CD, which is 3403. Uh, but this is not a sell the D point A to B equal CD. Or we could go ahead, I could draw in here a uh, butterfly pattern. Now, the reason for that, Mark, is this is really important. Um, if I were going to, sh so the, the A to B equals CD pattern was one of the very first patterns that I uh, learned. And the cool thing about it is that the market does 75% of the workforce. And what I mean by that is in order to draw the pattern, uh, the market has to create the A to B and the C points out here. So there's four points, A, B, C. That's why I say the market does 75% of the work for us. So in this case here, based upon today's chart, the A to B equals CD pattern that we would draw, the A point down here at the low of the trading session of March 17th. The B point out here was March 27th. We know that because then the market started to make a retracement out here. And the C point is the low of April 2nd. So once that's done, that then gives us our price projection tool. Now the price projection tool that Stevie uses out here is the one-to-one -one level, but that doesn't have to be the D point. It could be an expansion of the A to B leg out here. That means a 1.272, a 1.618, a 2.0, a 2.618, a 3.14 out there. So those would be your Fibonacci expansions. Here's the deal. Look, and I learned this the hard way. I don't want you, I want you to learn your own mistakes and not repeat my mistakes. And my original mistakes were, Mark, I would sell every D point on an A to B equals CD to the upside, and I would buy every D point on an A to B equals CD to the downside. If you do that enough, you're going to find out you get your tuchus handed to you, and I don't want that to happen to you. Certainly, you don't want mine. And what I learned 
and you learn more from failure is you start spending time trying to understand why didn't that work? Why couldn't I just carte blanche sell every one-to-one -one A to B equals CD or buy every one-to-one -one A to B equals CD? And that's where the power of Japanese candlesticks came in because this is how the market communicates to us. This is how the market tells you and I where a group of traders, buyers or sellers are ready to take a position and defend that position. Now, Japanese candlesticks on their own in the middle of the move, I've never been able to find any use for it. So I can tell you after decades now of using these Japanese candlesticks, just using Japanese candlesticks on their own are basically meaningless. They're helpful to identify some levels of support, support or resistance, but their real power is to connect them to some type of pattern that you trade. Right now, our focus is on the A to B equals CD pattern. And what I learned here, Mark, was that you needed to see the, uh, in order to be able to at least increase your odds of a probability of a trade working, you on a, in this case here, you're looking for the sell point, potentially, of the A to B equals CD pattern. You needed to see those bears arrive because if they don't, then price is going to continue to move higher. If they don't, if we don't see a bearish reversal candle price will continue to move higher. So now we just simply take a look at the GDX. As price was making the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, it was a bullish candle. It was a gap to the upside out there. On my chart, it shows up as a rising window. No bearish reversal candles yet. If we get one, then yes, it would be the sell, the D point. But let the market communicate that to you. If we don't get a bearish reversal candle, then Mark, the next projection area is around 3703. We use these areas as guidelines, not as exact to the tick um, uh, type of uh, price moves out here. So we really use them as guidelines. So really important. So good question. You know, uh, isn't this just a sell the D point? It is one potential D point, but it's not the sell the D point. You really want to be, and in this case here, we know that the retracement was just a 0 0.382 retracement. That suggests more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. However, we can also see that along the way here, that price has been moving sideways, and it's on the right side of that C to D leg, so it's weakening. So this could be the area, but I would rather, if you're going to try to sell your long position or try to go short, I would really rather you wait until the cavalry... And that would mean some type of Japanese bearish candle arrived on the scene out there. So uh, I hope that helps you out, uh, Mike. There was a question to take a look at USO, UCO. Let me see if I can figure out which one was requested out here. Uh, where was that? Give me a second here to try to find that because there's UCO. So let's go take a look at UCO. And... Uh, <clears throat> Let's see. So, uh, so I don't know. What is this? Is this UC, what is UCO? Hold on a second here. Let me, uh, let me put this up on our three time frames, our daily, our weekly, and our monthly. So this is the Bloomberg. This is OK. So so you're trying to go long oil. That's the request out here. Uh, <clears throat> OK, so what are we going to do for that? For that. What we're going to do and share for you is going to be short-term time frame charts out here. So let me punch up the uh, June contract here for Lightsweet Crude. And I don't know what's in UCO, so I don't know which contract uh, is is in there. So, the, you know, that's really got to be one of, we've we got to understand what is inside the ETF out here in order to make any kind of real headway. So let me see if I can type this in UCO holdings so let me see if i can get this to uh, uh, yeah let me just see if i can pull this up pro shares uco let's see if we can find out what the holdings are daily holdings so this says july and september okay so good reason to not be paying attention to so let's pull up the july contract out here give me a moment to do that cl 07-20 and uh, actually september is the uh, largest dollar exposure. So September, this is through the 27th. So through yesterday, 560 million is in the September future contract and 386 million is in the July contract. And then the rest is um, some swaps and um, 
send some cash out there. So now when we take like really I think to to look at this what is this? That's a 30-minute time frame out here. So let me get my uh, tools. So on a 30-minute time frame, this thing had made a bottom, but it ran right up into resistance. You see these TD nine count patterns. So understanding support and resistance. Whoever had asked me about UCO, I've got to imagine you wanted to trade this. And if you're trading the ETF, you still have to understand what's going on on the underlying instruments. You don't have to trade them. Although in this instance, I would really recommend that you be trading the future contract because then you're going to have uh, stoppage protection all throughout the uh, trade out there whereas if you're doing the ETF you know you, you, you don't have that but if you take a look if you're wondering what happened in Lightspeed Crude on the July contract and why it made its run and it stopped to at where it did it was because that's where the breakdown level was 1932 no swing point understand the nines the TD nine count look at this stage here it's back below support it's gonna go test the lows from four o'clock this morning Steve that's what Lightspeed Crude is gonna do we'll be right back I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastery Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we were taking a look at or trying to take a look at UCO, which is a uh, one of the uh, oil uh, ETFs out there. And then what we did was we went to uh, we we went to the uh, uh, we we. 
we, we went and identified what was inside it. And the largest holding was a September uh, light speed crude contract. That's what we have up on our screen here. Uh, when we began the show, we began by taking a look at the ES mini and its 30 minute time frame to understand that when the market sold off this morning, that all it was doing was coming back to test support. It tested and rejected a support level out here. And what we did was we were able to identify that. We know that strong support. We know that if price closes below that level, it'll go down to its next area. Well, here's a 30 minute time frame chart showing just the opposite. And that's the uh, light sweet crude contract for September. And at 530 this morning, price closed above its resistance level of 2447. These green horizontal lines are your resistance levels. They're not anything Stevie drew in here. They're just based upon a set of uh, tools that uh, that we use out here. And so once you break through one level, you go to the next. Well, take a look at where price stopped this morning at 6 o'clock in Lightsweet Crude. It stopped at its next level, 25.15. Now, these are not swing points. These are not anything. Well, they are something out here. They are the beginning or the higher low of the TD9 count pattern out here. And they really help you to understand what the market is communicating to us. If we just break the market down for the time frames that we trade and that we're looking for, it can, we can really simplify everything by understanding support and resistance and understanding topping and bottoming patterns out here. There's more topping and bottoming patterns that out there than the ones that I use. Just the ones that I use work so well, um, we use them. Boy, that was one heck of a sentence, wasn't it? Can, can you believe I actually graduated from college and I could deliver? I could deliver that as an orator out here. But here's what we do know about the September contract for Lights Week Crew this morning. We could see that it was forming a bottom right here at 4 o'clock. Right here at 4 o'clock. How do we know that? Roads momentum indicator bottom. Prices moving lower. Less relative energy. Cavalry. We wait for the cavalry. That's the opposite of what Mark and I were looking at for the GDX. Here you get a hammer candle at 4 o'clock. Then you price trades on the next 30 minutes, almost back towards the bottom of that hammer candle, giving you really an ideal entry. Uh, if you wanted to wait, you could wait because you get the next bullish reversal candle at 5 o'clock this morning. That tells you price is headed up towards that 24.47. You move into it with a wide-ranging bar, close over it. Price comes back, tests and rejects. 24.47 goes on to its next level of 25.15. Acts as resistance. Price is now pulling back into, in essence, where it started at about 5 o'clock this morning. Are you asking me if I would take a, a trade in UCO? Not, to, not, on your, not on anyone's life. If you're asking me, would you trade Lightsweet Crude using these patterns? Yeah, absolutely. Because the patterns are still working, and I just simply wouldn't get married to a, a trade. Uh, much like our health experts have gotten married to their projections. You're always supposed to use new information. You know, the thing about a trading these markets out here, no matter who you are, no matter what side you trade, no matter what side you take, the most important thing that you can do, people have asked me many times, what's the, I, I want to learn how to trade. I want to learn how to interpret the market. What is it that I need to do out there? Tell me the best thing. Tell me one thing out there. No, I can't tell you one thing, but I can tell you the one thing that if you don't learn how to do, you will absolutely fail. What do you think that might be? You will absolutely fail if you don't do this one thing. You must be able to look at both sides of the trade. You have got to take a look at both sides of the trade. And the easiest time to do that is when you're not in a trade out there. So you may be taking a look at an instrument and you have convinced yourself that it is bullish. And that's a wonderful thing. Now spend your time. This is the first thing that I learned at a Harvard Business School class that was sponsored by IBM. Uh, this really came from, so this is not something that I created. This came from Watson. This actually came from the guy out there. And what he did with his sales team, because his sales team was so certain when they would go on a call that they could close the deal. And then the question that he posed to them was, go back and look at, at your presentation or whatever conclusions you reached, and now tell me why you would lose the sale. In other words, you must look at both sides of the market. The A to B equals CD pattern, each day or each minute, depending on the time frames that you're using and trading, the market is revealing new information to you. And when that new information gets revealed, you need to be willing to change your opinion. You can't get married to, you can, but you'll get, you'll get 
you, you, you don't want to get married to an opinion. If you're bullish, keep looking for why is it that you shouldn't be bullish. Hopefully you won't find any reasons for that. But you must take a look at both sides of the trade. If only our health people that have closed down this economy would do the same thing. I understand and you can understand why the actions were taken after the first couple of weeks out there because there wasn't a whole heck of a lot of data. Now there's all kinds of data, isn't there? But yet what I find when I watch these different news conferences and so forth is these folks have gotten into a bad trade. And now what they're trying to do is convince you and I and everybody else that their bad trade is correct. Really? You take a look at those projections that these folks have come out with that got us into this mess to begin with out here and nothing has even been close to correct. Not even close to correct. So look, the, the most valuable piece of advice that I could give to anyone out there is the market's responsibility is to give you and I new information to consider making a change to our thinking out there. And we must always look at both sides of the trade of everything. Look, if you're a person and you are tied to Fox News out there, that's fine for whatever reason. Now spend 70% of your time looking at the other channels and trying to understand the other side and vice versa. If you're married to the Chinese news network out there, CNN, then spend 75% of your time watching the other side. If you really want to get a good feel and a good picture of everything, you must be willing to look at both sides. And if you don't, well, then you're, I guess, only seeing one side of the trade. And I don't want you to do that here. I want you to be able to see both sides of the trade. Okay, enough about that. Don't even know how we got there. But we did. But we did. Now let's go take a look at platinum. There was a request to go take a look at uh, platinum. I think the request was to take a look at uh, maybe the ETF for platinum. But uh, whoever had posted that in was also saying, hey, wait a minute, go take a look at the current platinum contract. I'm going to assume that that is what's inside the ETF. I think it's PPLT. So here, if we go take a look at the platinum contract, that is the July contract, what is it that we know? First, what do we know about support and resistance? Price is above resistance. It's above resistance on the daily time frame. The daily resistance level for platinum is 766.60. We're trading right now at 799.60. The resistance level for platinum for its weekly time frame is 791. It's only Tuesday. It's only 138 in the afternoon. But at least at this stage here, platinum is above resistance. And a weekly close above 791 says it wants to move higher. Now, move higher to where? Well, just so happens we've got an A to B equals C, D to the upside out here on a daily basis. And that says that platinum should move up to the 871.50-ish area. That's your one-to-one -one A to B equals C, D pattern. Your next area of resistance is going to be 803. Once you get through that, if it can get through that, then 871.50 is the next projected level the one-to-one -one, a to b equals cd always look at both sides of the trade folks and that includes all the stuff going on in the media and the health stuff and everything else if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mortgage program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in st petersburg florida the Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 58. S&P is flat. Let's go to Orlando and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you. Uh, so it's the S&P that you want to take a look at, and you're ready to jump to the short side or on the short side already? I already did. Yesterday, 1,000 shares of SPXS. It's triple the S&P short. Yes, and I'm looking at the candle of April 10th, 2883, with volume of 4.8 billion. The high of April 10th. It's staying around that. April 10th. You're looking at SPXS? Is that what you're no, looking on at? No, on the S&P. On the S&P chart. Okay. Okay, the okay. April 10th high of 2883, and it's it's kind of the last two days staying around that. If it stays, if it goes and stays above it, is that going higher? Well, at this stage here, so what what I'm going to do is here's here's the very first thing that you need to see in order to say that you might be correct on your S and P 500 short. You've at least got to see a key level of support broken. And so for the S&P 500, that's going to come from the ES mini. That's the S&P futures contract. And the level that you need to see price close below is 2850650. That's what was tested this morning. And that's what held this morning. And that is where price most recently broke out, which was at 130 this morning. So the breakout and the level that we're taking a look at, hopefully you can watch us on Tiger TV and you can see my chart on the screen right now. Um, uh -huh. that 20, and, and if not, you can catch the archive. I'll have this up on the archive. Uh, so you'll be able to get that on YouTube and you'll be able to see this. So that's going to be the first level of support that you need to see broken in order to say that you should be inside the SPXS. If it is not broken, you don't see a close below that, then it's telling you that all that you saw take place today was nothing more than a, a test and rejection of a key level of support out here. And that would then suggest to you and I that price would move higher. Now, for where is price going to move higher, I'm going to come back to the equity futures contract. I'm going to take a look at the ES mini, and I'm going to expand this just to give you an idea for where those levels are out are at. Price is above resistance, which is the top of its daily profile, and that level is 2846. 
And as long as price stays above that, and I know that's different than the uh, value that we took a look at earlier, but as long as price stays above that, above daily resistance, we don't have a topping pattern or a topping signal. And without that topping pattern or topping signal, that would suggest to you or I that the ES Mini could trade up to about 3012. We're at 2876 as we speak right now. You wouldn't want to uh, feel that pain. So whether it makes that move, the ES Mini, up to that 3012 level or not, I, I just hope that you at least have a stop in place. Now, of course, that stop can get jumped uh, when you wake up the next morning if futures begin trading higher, which they typically uh, do. Just as we saw this morning, uh, futures took off at about 130. So you, you start paying attention to the different opens, whether it's the open in Asia or it's the open in uh, Europe out there, um, to pay attention to what the markets are doing. But right now, it's very difficult for me to be able to uh, say to you that you are on the right side of that trade. I don't have a topping pattern. Here, I'm going to pull over my other chart for the ES Mini. And um, well, the only topping pattern I have, so I'll give you a different, another level to pay attention to. And that is, there was a TD9 count pattern, which can be a top. And that formed out here on the trading day of April 17th. And if you see a close above that high, that's 28.85 then that pattern will have failed. And if that pattern will have failed, that's when that says, okay, I can make a move and price up to 3012 or 3028. 3028 is where the ES Mini most recently broke down on its move to the downside. And that's your real key level of resistance. So the levels to be watching, so you're kind of in the middle here, aren't you? You're, you're in between support on that 30 minute time frame that held, and now you're gonna be watching the daily resistance level. The only justification to stay in the trade would be as long as the ES Mini closes below 2885, and you're at 2877 right now. So the next, um, the next uh, 2885, what's that, eight points out there? Uh, the next eight points are going to be really crucial to you. Does that help? I'm, I'm, I know I'm not taking a look at the SPXS because I'm really taking a look at the underlying instrument versus a, a triple or a double, whatever SPXS is, because this is going to provide us with better information. So no, can, okay. can, can you fine. use uh, can you, The yeah, SPXS okay. uh, gives me more idea or more picture. But uh, 2885, that level is important. That's going to be if, if price closes above that 2855 or 2885 level, that's mm -hmm. the high yeah. of April 17th. And that was your TD9 count pattern. And if price closes above that, then a key, then a topping pattern will have failed. And as topping patterns fail, what it's communicating to us, John, is that price wants to continue to move higher. Now, both you and I don't know what's going to happen the next minute. And all we can do right. is, is, is put the probabilities on our side and then say to ourselves, hey, you know what? A key level, a key topping pattern failed. And if it's failed, it says don't be on the short side of the trade because the other side of the trade is communicating to you that price should move higher. Okay, okay? that helps a lot. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Uh, thanks so much for calling. That was John in Orlando. Let's go out to uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing just great, Steve. How about yourself? Uh, also very well. Thanks so much for asking. And it's uh, U.S. Steel we're going to take a look at. Uh, and uh, tell the folks, uh, tell me how we can help you. I am long this uh, from 510. My question is, you might have already brought it up, but I, uh, I believe we're in day two of the TD count on the daily, if I have count, uh, did the count correct. Um, and it looks like we're getting close to maybe a bullish crossover in the OUL. And then I also wanted to just have you take a look at maybe some resistance levels that you know, on the, on the uh, TAS, uh, different market profiles. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay, so we've got U.S. deal. Uh, so thanks for thanks for uh, 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 giving that summation of what it is that, that you're looking for. And uh, right now on the daily time frame chart, folks, we're looking at the daily time frame for U.S. deal. And uh, and as you know, folks, uh, there's several patterns that we we'll use for tops or bottoms. One of those patterns is the TD9 count, and that bottom can form bars eight, nine, or the bar following number nine. In this case here, U.S. deal made a bottom on bar number eight. We also take a look at our wave counts, our Chapman wave counts out here. And what we look for is that seventh wave move, and that's going to be letter G on my screen. You'll see at the bottom there below eight, you'll see 
uh, two different G's out there. So you had uh, you had uh, wave number seven. So you had a real bottoming signal. You also had the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom, and that uh, went ahead and uh, firmed inside of U.S. Steel. That went ahead and confirmed that pattern. If I can get my cursor here, that went ahead. What the heck? Try this slower. Okay, that went ahead and confirmed on March 19th. Now. What Brent knows, we're about to go to break here, but we'll come back and we'll take a look at this with Brent. You, Brent, your next area of resistance on the move higher is going to be 799. That's the breakdown level on the daily basis using the TD9 counts. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the market. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, so, Brent, yesterday, uh, U.S. Steel closed above the top of its bear structure daily profile, which was 701. And today it's trading above that. So two days above resistance tells us.
All right. Hopefully we're back. Are we back? We're back. Sorry about that, uh, Brent. Um, good. Uh, so, Brent, what I was telling you, what I was sharing with you, let me repeat that. My apology. Uh, so price closed above the top of a bear yesterday and we're above it today that signals to us it wants to move higher price wants to move higher the top of its weekly profile is at 988 price is below the bottom of its monthly profile at 1298 so knowing that price closed above the top of a bearish structured pro we're going to have day two and that's okay if we've lost brent here brent you can you can follow this hopefully you're listening the next area that you've got to watch is going to be 799. 799 is where U.S. Steel broke down. I don't have any other topping signal. Just that price is likely. It's that we've, you know, it's it's broken out above a key level of resistance, the top of that daily profile. Now the next area for you to be watching is going to be 799. And if price can get above that, well, then the next level is 1107. But we know that the uh, top of its uh, weekly profile, 988, would come in play first. So sorry about that, folks, that uh, we lost the uh, signal there for a moment. Uh, but thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned, please. Two wonderful hours are up next. You've got uh, your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up. And then after that, Tom O'Brien. And I'll see you on wonderful Wednesday. So uh, thanks for being here and have a terrific Tuesday.